Thanks, Pastor Mike. Good evening. And uh, it's uh, such a privilege for me to preach the word of God tonight. And uh, I remember the last time that I preached here that uh, I overstayed. And Pastor Roy told me, you already have overstayed. I'll deport you. <laughs> no. Uh, I just, you know, preached uh, so emotionally at that time, so I failed to look on the clock. But tonight, I'll behave. I could imagine how the joy that Pastor Roy and Sister Elena and the whole family uh, feels, and the whole church, as uh, the family of Pastor Tim sings, and especially they are involved in the mission still. So tonight, uh, let me invite you to open your Bible in the book of Psalms in chapter 81. I'll be preaching a short message entitled, Missing the Opportunity. Missing the Opportunity. Let me read, unlike in James Bible. Psalms 81, verse number 1. Down, oh, verse number 8, I should say, I'm sorry. Down to verse number 15. 8. Bible says, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel. If thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. 12. So I gave them up under their own hearts, lust, and they walk in their own counsels. 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto, my, unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. 14. Uh, I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turn my hand against their adversaries. 15. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. 16. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock. Should I have satisfied them? You know what? Oh, I like this message. Let's pray. Our grace, Lord and Heavenly Father, please help me now. I'm slow speaking, a foreigner in this country. I am, but I am only rely, relying upon thy grace. Oh, Holy Spirit, God, please help me now. Please help these precious people. We have prayed a lot that this short message would be a blessing to them. What is my prayer in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. I believe that uh, on every person living on this planet, in this uh, world, God has given so fair in giving every person the opportunity or chance to be saved. Right. And for the sake, I believe every one of, his, of, this, uh, uh, of us here in this uh, congregation are saved Amen. by the grace of God. Through our Lord, through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a lot of privileges as a child of God. For God to perform or to work into our lives as well as into His church. And for God and His will to be followed. To be followed. I like to follow the will of God. Amen. But let's go back, go back to His chosen people, Israel. God poured out his heart, hurting heart, against his uh, chosen people. In this uh, part of the Bible in Psalms chapter 81. His disappointment, if you will. We notice that five times God said, let's begin in verse number 14. I should soon have. 15. The Lord 
should have. Fifteen, their time should should have. Sixteen, he should have. Sixteen on the on the last part, should I have? Of course, you know more than I do. In uh, in uh, if you take it on on a par paraphrase, you know the thought of that uh, those that that phrase. I should have. I should have done this. I should have done that. But my people did not hearken unto my voice. Right. Listen, this phrase simply indicates that in spite of God's plan, willingness and longingness to do things in the lives of his children and on his churches for the glory of God, he just can't do it. As far as this uh, uh, Psalms right. tells us, I see two things why God cannot uh, perform great things and as well as blessing his people. First is disobedience. Right. We know this in Psalms 81, the progression of God's disobedience. And of course, speaking of, uh, of, uh, the, of God's chosen people in Israel, it reminds us it reminds us, we, his people saved by the blood. We, his people, who were recipient for, uh, uh, from, uh, from, from the Lord Jesus Christ's work of redemption. We are saved by grace. Amen. We belong to his family right. as a saved person. So let's go back to that progression of God's, dis of, 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 of God's people's disobedience. Verse number 8, if thou wilt hearken unto me. We see here God's fair opportunity given to every people of God. To every child of God. Opportunity to do his will. Right. Opportunity to please God. Amen. Opportunity and privilege. When I say privilege, it's only given to, to the few people. Not all. Right. If you are a child of God, you have that privilege. Amen. As a father to his children. Amen. The, the, the children of, it, of this uh, couple, the children have that such privilege which is not given to the neighbor. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. We have such privilege as a child of God. We go to that pro progression. Verse 11. But my people would not have hearkened to my voice. You see, let's go back to that verse number 8. If thou wilt hearken unto me. And in verse number 11, Bible says, But my people would not hearken to my voice. We see here that God's, uh, you know, he is so disappointed. Why? His expectation was failed. And another, another progression in verse number 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened to my voice. Right. We see here God's longingness to see his people obeying his command. Amen. For him to perform great and mighty things which cannot, we cannot imagine. Huh. We cannot imagine. You remember when one one situation in the old times when the prophet Nathan approached David. God spoke to, to David through Nathan. Right. Okay? Because uh, David, David had sinned. Second, second Samuel chapter 12, in verse number 7 down to verse number 10. How God wanted to do more to David. But David despised God's command. Look at uh, look carefully in verse number seven. And Nathan said to David, "Thou art the man." Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, "I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Eight, and I gave thee thy master's house first blessing, 
and thy master's wives unto thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Right. Ooh. But look in verse number 9. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Listen for the sake of time. On those verses in the Bible, God is more than excited to bless his people. Amen. But his people often opted to disobey God's command. Which should be the means of God's blessing. God is willing to bless. Amen. God is willing to bless. Amen. More than willing. Of course, you know the condition and the blessing. The condition and the promise. You know that. Right. God has all, God is in position. He is, he is the God and we are the followers. He is God. Right, right. Don't reverse. Don't reverse. God is the one who is making condition, not us. God is in, in a position to make condition. And if he, he is pleased with that condition, what follows is his promise or the blessing. For those who are writing, Psalms 37, verse 3 to 5. I, I'll read quickly. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. That's the, the condition and the promise. Condition and the blessing. For delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Condition and the promise. Condition and the blessing. Five. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Let's go back to the let's go, let's go up to the second. Unbelief. Why does God does not perform great and mighty things? Why, why does God can cannot perform those? Though he wished, he wished to bless individuals. Christians, his children, and the church. Right. First, disobedience. Second, unbelief. Uh -huh. Unbelief. Mark chapter 9. We see here that our Lord Jesus Christ is very much willing to do great and mighty things, provided that the father of the boy who was possessed with evil spirit would believe that nothing is impossible with God. The second hindrance is under it. Mark chapter 9, verse number 15, down to verse number 23. Let's, let's just read two verses, 22 and 23. The dad of the boy who was possessed said, And oftentimes he did cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. 23. Jesus said unto them, unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Jesus is more than willing to bless us. Amen. If we will only believe. Amen. We, we on the way. Today is our missions conference, and I give me around three minutes more. With a certain goal, I hope you and I agree that giving is one of the means wherein God performs great things. Wonderful. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 16, down to verse number 17. 16. For even in testament, like I just sent once and again unto my necessity. 17. Not because I desire a gift, but desire fruit that may abound to your account. Notice, it is. It is the missionary, uh, Paul, Paul's desire that a fruit 
will abound to their account. Paul was the recipient, but the fruit or the blessing will got multiplied or abound to the church at Philippi. And here's the challenge. Here is the challenge, my, my brothers and sisters, last verse that I would share on the in First Corinthians or Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 to 11. Now he, God, that ministered sent to the sower, but minister bread to your food, and multiply your seeds, so and increase the fruits of your righteousness. 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which God said through us thanksgiving to God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, here's my statement. God has no intention to hurt nor harm us when he instructed us to be involved in giving. Amen. Giving to finance the church that we belong and to meet the needs of all evangelists. Listen carefully. God is willing to bless us. Thank you so much.